Let's see how to create a struct in Rust and some of the things that you can do with it. To declare a struct, you say struct and then follow by the name of the struct. For example, let's create a struct called point and it will have two fields, x of type float, let's say float32, and y of type float32. Another way to create a struct is kind of like a tuple. So say struct and say, let's say point 3D. This will represent a point in three dimensional space. So it's gonna take in three parameters. Here, instead of having like a key value pair that we saw in the example above, you can simply put in the parameters. So say for x, let's put in f32, and for y, let's put in f32, and for the z coordinate, let's again put a f32. So this is a second way of creating a struct. And there's also nothing stopping us from creating an empty struct, so say struct empty. Notice it doesn't take any parameters. It doesn't store any data. However, this is a valid struct in Rust. Rust will not complain if you create an empty struct. Okay, and we can also create a nested struct. We have a struct circle, and it's gonna store two data, the center of this circle and the radius of the circle. For the center, we can represent this as a 2D point, and we can use the struct point that we created above, point. And then let's say radius of type U32. So notice that this circle is a struct that holds another struct inside. This is an example of a nested struct. Next, inside the main function, let's create a struct. So say that P point is equal to point with the field X, let's put a one, and for Y, let's put a two. And to access the field, this point struct has the field X and Y. So to access it, you say P dot X and P dot Y. Let's print this out, say print ln point dot X is equal to and point dot y is equal to. So I made a mistake here. The data type for x and y are float. So we need to say 1.0 and 2.0. Okay, let's try printing this out. Cargo run dash dash bin name of the file struct. Okay, and get point dot x is one and point dot y is equal to two. So this is an example of creating a struct and accessing the field x and y. How about for other structs? Let's see examples of how to create these structs and also access the data that is contained in these structs. So let's start with point 3D. Let's say that P is equal to point 3D. Inside the parentheses, we'll put in the number. Let's say 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 for the X, Y, Z coordinate. And to access the field, notice that this struct doesn't have any name for the field that it contains. So to access the first number that is stored in the struct, you'll need to do p.0. And to access the second one, you'll need to do p.1. And to access the third number, this will be three, you'll need to do p.2. This is like the syntax for tuples. Let's print this out as well. Let's say print ln point 3d. Okay, and then execute the code. And we get point 3d is one, two, and three. Okay, and we can also create an empty struct by saying that, let's say empty is equal to empty. Notice it doesn't take any parameters. And how about circle? How do we create a nested struct? So let's say that circle is equal to circle. For the first field, center, we need to create another struct of type point. And inside it, it's gonna have two fields, x and y, let's say 1.0, and for y, let's put 2.0. And then radius, let's say radius is one. Okay, let's try printing this out. And here, let's try using the debug feature to print this circle out. So say print ln, we'll use the curly braces, colon, question mark, closing curly braces, closing double quote, and then followed by circle. Try to save this, get a compilation error saying circle does not implement debug. So let's add a debug attribute to the circle struct. Going up, say derive debug. Try to save it. And now it's saying that point doesn't implement the debug trait. So now we also need to add a debug to point. Okay, save it. And now the contract compiles. Let's print this out. And we get circle is center with point one zero and radius one. So we looked at debug and read as well. So let's move on. Let's move on to shortcuts. So let's say that x is a variable of float. Let's put this as 1.0. And we have y, again, a variable a float as 1.0. Now, remember over here, we created a point and did this 
to create this point, we can also do x, and then for y, we can do y. However, there's a shortcut. Since the name of the variable is the same as the name of the field, we can simply omit the variable. So it will be like this. So this is a shortcut. Rust is smart enough to figure out that the field point.x refers to this variable x, and the field point.y refers to this variable y. Next, I'm going to show you a shortcut for copying fields. So let's say that we have p. I'll rename this as p0. And for the values, I'll have 1.0 and for y, also 1.0. And let's say that we wanted to create a new struct where all of the data is the same except for one field. For example, let's say p1. I want to change the value for x from 1 to 2, but keep y the same. One way to do this is to say p0.y. And if there's another field inside this point, let's say z, 1.0 as well, then over here you'll also have to say p0.z. This is kind of redundant. So here I'll show you a shortcut. The shortcut is to remove this and simply do dot dot followed by p0. This will tell Rust to update the field x to 2.0 and for the rest of the field, copy the value that is stored in p0. Okay, to show you this, let's print this out, print, and then say p1. So what you'll see is that x will be equal to 2.0. This is the updated value, and y will be 1.0. This is the previous value that was copied over. Execute the code, and you get point is equal to x equal to 2.0, and y is equal to 1.0. Okay, the last example that I'll show you is how to update a struct. So let's say that p, let's say that mute, p, since we're going to be modifying this struct, is equal to point, x is 0, 0.0, and y is 0, 0.0. Then let's say we wanted to update the field both x and y. For example, let's increment x by 1, plus equals 1. Let's also do the same for y. So this should be 1.0, since we're dealing with float. Okay, and then let's print this out. Execute the code again, and we get point, x is equal to 1.0, and y is 1.0. So these are some examples of things that you can do with a struct. Update, copy fields, shortcut when you're creating a struct with some variables that have the same name as the fields in the struct, and then how to initialize various structs.